So straight into it, the AOS 5, I will cover how I built the quad, and then um, I'm gonna go straight into ripping these two. Um, it'll be the AOS against, uh, let me don't screw this up, let me not screw it up. So no particular order, they are ranked one through five. I'm not gonna tell you what that is, but so far it's gonna be the AOS 5 and the Sync V5. So the Sync and the AOS are going head to head for the first one. Real quick rundown, the frame, um, likes and don't likes. I do not think this frame is very sturdy per se. Like I said before in the videos, everything's pretty lightweight, but not, uh, not what I would consider a basher frame. Still gonna send it uh, in the same manner I'll send the other ones. Assembly went together pretty easily. I am not a fan of the camera, the camera mount sticking way out in front past the uh, standoffs or the arms, if you guys could see that. So the tips of the arms are here and then the camera mount is here. Also, due to the length of the frame, you're gonna require possibly a, a longer digital cable or longer cord for your, if you're running digital to your camera versus your VTX or you're gonna have to locate your VTX up front, which I did not want to do. Um, and then I did my typical tape in. I didn't use any of the hardware. I inverted the mount so that I could pinch it in place. Less than ideal. Um, and then the way the power leads are configured, this is another thing that I do not prefer. Uh, the power lead in the front of the quads. Reason being is when you have a crash, typically, um, let me smash that in place, grab a pack. So let's just say your handy dandy pack is mounted in your quad. Don't mind that broken lead. And then you have a front impact at a high rate of speed, which is going to happen real soon. Then your pack will jam up against your plug dislodging it, breaking it, smashing it, and bending those leads, which will recall, will cause you to constantly replace those um, front leads. Now, the one that came with this, I exchanged it for a more heavy duty one. Um, the one that's in here now is, is an upgrade because I know that this will be a problem and I actually want the quad to last some. I don't want things that aren't, I guess, inherent to the actual function of the quad or the, the overall durability performance of the quad to affect the uh, testing. I did throw on my um, standard antenna mount. Everything else is as delivered. I went through and torqued everything. One more feature I don't like, and I believe all 10 of 10 quads employ this, except for the Apex, they give you an option, is the through bolt mounting method. Now I'm gonna get some pushback, right? People are gonna say, oh, I've been mounting my flight controls and ESCs this way for years. It works, it works, this, that, and the other. Got it, I'm sure that it works for you. But now I'm going to explain to you why it is not a good idea. On the AOS, it's not an issue, right? The motor or the ESC and flight controller boats, bolts are not attached in any fashion form to the arms or frame supports. That's a good idea. However, these bolts over time, crash after crash after crash, will come loose. Can that happen with other bolts? Sure it can, absolutely. But what also happens here is if you don't build this properly, your flight stack and your ESC stacks tend to get pinched. These bolts will get bent because they're long and through, and then they will lock your flight controller in, distorting your flight performance and wrecking your tune. So you're gonna constantly, if you're not checking that on a maintenance schedule, you're gonna have to deal with regular retunes or at least crap flying oscillations and such. So what I would recommend is going to a soft silicon standoff or the plastic standoffs, or just another method for mounting your flight controller. ESC, hard mounted all day long, no big deal. I use dampeners just because I'm gonna be beating this up real hard, and that's a FET Tech ESC, and they catch fire. Um, this is the new 65 amp. I think I mentioned this in another video, not pleased, but we're gonna do another video in the future where we're gonna go through the ESCs, and I'm gonna beat all those up as well so you all can see kind of the durability of them, or lack thereof. So, uh, VTX. Antenna, VTX, flight controller, ESC, RX, camera, and then mounts and motors. Quick snapshot. The other thing, um, I do like the amount of space they provide. It's really good. So if you're out just doing camera work or freestyle and not crashing, could be a really good frame for you. I'm gonna try and figure out how to, um, I don't have black box, but I could put a logger on my flight stack here on the KISS, which I may do. And I'll do some flight tests, flight runs, and then gather some vibration data because I think it'd be really cool to show you all each of the uh, 
the frame performance from a resonance perspective so that you can actually see, no kidding, hey, this is what Phantom put together and this is the data he gathered. So that's it. Just want to give you a quick snapshot and then I'll pull in the, um, the Sync V2 here real soon and then I'll do another cover down. So hang on, be right back. Oh, almost forgot. So another um, issue I see with this design is the wires. And yep, some people have told me before Der Dervy told me, you know, this is sitting on, you know, a gyro sensor. I don't care. It's not affected any performance whatsoever. And in some of the frames, based on his recommendation, and just because I was lazy doing this, I do run it underneath now. Um, I was expeditiously putting this together. But these wires don't tend to really affect the gyro as much as this wire would. And these wires, because of the design and the way my flight stack is set up, I can't feed them under the flight controller, which I wouldn't want to do anyway but they have to go over top of the flight controller, which is also less than ideal because now you have these wires pressing down against your flight stack and then locking it in place up against your gyro, creating noise. Um, I, I think that was probably an oversight in the design, but yeah, I don't recommend running your power leads across your flight stack underneath of it or anywhere around where they could impede the stability of your overall flight. So uh, that's it. All right, onto the Superfly sync mode. Um, so as you all can tell, it's really tight in here. I didn't have um, too many issues with the configuration. The only downside was the back. I kind of like forced in this mount. There's probably much better mounts on the market, but that's what I came up with. And I just threw tape and glue on my um, VTX antenna, as you can see there, which again, I'm not really worried. I'm using uh, recycled gear because I don't want to smash up my really good new gear, but this is what I got. I used the camera mount here and then glued the camera in place. Um, and then everything else, as you all can see, it's the slam style frame. It's got the through bolts. So they're long bolts and not the typical uh, dampened um, silicone or uh, yeah, flexible wash or yeah, flexible bolts that I use on my um, traditional builds. But just give you a quick look inside. That's under the hood. It is tight. The strap does come in contact with the flight controller, but we don't have what we see or saw in the AOS where the wires are going over top the flight controller. Um, again, some may complain about these wires. I'm not worried about it. This has literally been my configuration for probably four, three or four years and uh, no issues. So that's it. That's what we got. We're going out to the field now. Let's see which one breaks first. Let's go.